Tianchu, overwhelmed by emotions and the challenges he faced, seeks survival and a peaceful life. As he closes his eyes, the system notifies him of a new skill mastered, crazy fusion Taijiquan sword. Responding to this, Tianchu is enveloped in a large amount of blue aura, screaming loudly. The intense energy radiating from him catches the attention of Tianyang, Tianyang seeing Tianchu's intense aura and wonders if he's gone mad. He notices the strange blue-purple flame surrounding Tianchu as he becomes fully immersed in it. Tianyang is puzzled by this unexpected turn of events. Tianchu, enveloped in aura, charges fiercely towards Tianyang with a sense of madness. Tianyang quickly detects Tianchu's movement. As Tianchu closes in on Tianyang, Tianchu employs the Heaven and Earth Four Divisions skill, creating multiple illusions of himself that encircle Tianyang. Tianchu, wielding his sword, launches a rapid series of attacks against Tianyang, swinging his sword with incredible speed. Closing in on Tianyang, Tianchu employs the Taijiquan sword skill, further increasing his sword speed. With this enhanced skill, Tianchu delivers multiple cuts to Tianyang, who struggles to evade the onslaught of attacks. Tianchu's sword slices across Tianyang's cheek, catching him off guard. Tianyang, surprised by Tianchu's increasing speed, realizes the intensifying threat. Meanwhile, Tianchu continues his relentless assault, shouting his determination to defeat Tianyang saying he'll cut him into pieces. Suddenly, the system notifies Tianchu of the activation of Crazy Fusion Taijiquan Sword. With the activation of the sword skill Crazy Fusion Taijiquan Sword, Tianchu's speed increases even further. He attacks Tianyang with incredible speed, swinging his sword rapidly. Tianyang struggles to dodge all of the attacks, gritting his teeth in frustration. Tianchu unleashes the Taijiquan sword skill with furious intensity, catching Tianyang off guard. With a series of rapid slashes, Tianchu lands multiple hits on Tianyang. Finally, Tianchu stabs Tianyang in the middle of his chest. As Tianyang is pierced, he coughs up blood and staggers backward as blood pours from his chest wound. After being stabbed by Tianchu, Tianyang collapses to the ground. Tianchu, struggling to catch his breath, eventually falls to his knees, propping himself up with his sword. As he regains his senses, Tianchu is overwhelmed by the pain coursing through his body. He realizes the immense strain that mastering these skills has placed on him, feeling as if his body is on the verge of breaking apart under the weight of their burden. After defeating Tianyang, Tianchu kneels down, using his sword as support. He reflects on his victory, feeling relieved that his efforts were not in vain. Meanwhile, Tianyang, recovering from the battle, gathers aura in his hand. Tianchu observes Tianyang's actions with surprise. Despite his defeat, Tianyang quickly regains his composure and envelops himself in a powerful aura, indicating his resilience and determination. Tianyang, surrounded by a strong aura, warns Tianchu not to relax. Suddenly, the system alerts them to a major energy fluctuation. Without hesitation, Tianyang gathers the surrounding aura around him, leaving Tianchu shocked by his actions. Tianchu, observing Tianyang's abilities, realizes this is a real mystic practitioner. Feeling the weight of the challenge, Tianchu acknowledges that dealing with Tianyang will be tougher than anticipated. As Tianyang gathers aura from the surroundings, he forms protective armor around himself using the absorbed energy. With remarkable skill, Tianyang manifests a new sword out of thin air using his aura. Tianyang raises his sword towards the sky, declaring that it is time to end the enjoyment. He gazes at Tianchu and asserts that it is now his duty as the elder brother to remind Tianchu of his mission. Tianchu responds with a grin, albeit with gritted teeth, indicating a conflicted reaction to Tianyang's words. As Tianyang moves to attack Tianchu, Tianchu, while facing Tianyang, wonders about their mission and the intentions of the Chu family. Suddenly, Tianyang swiftly approaches with his sword, declaring it to be the end. Just then, a system notification flashes, warning of a significant danger. As Tianyang charges at Tianchu with his sword, Tianchu attempts to block with his own. However, as Tianyang rapidly approaches, Tianchu struggles to maintain focus and remarks on the immense force behind Tianyang's attack. Tianchu finds it difficult to maintain eye contact with Tianyang, and despite grinning, he realizes the situation is dire. With gritted teeth, Tianchu acknowledges that he may not be able to endure much longer. Tianyang with a large amount of force attacks at Tianchu, they both dashes each other, but Tianchu is not yet strong enough to dodge the attack yet, so making a fetal hole on Tianchu's chest. As the battleground shatters into pieces, Tianchu begins to fall. In his descent, he reflects on the power of a single individual to command an entire army on the battlefield, demonstrated by the eldest son of the Chu family. With a gaze fixed on Tianyang, 
Tianshu acknowledges the severe consequences brought forth by someone possessing such terrifying skills. Tian Yang informs Tianshu that their father will return shortly. He urges Tianshu to make wise decisions and stay safe. Meanwhile, Tian Yang reflects to himself that once someone falls asleep, they never wake up again. Tianchu regains consciousness after the battle, from Tianyang's whirlpool. He gazes up and sees Lu Yan's face, realizing he's lying in her lap. Lu Yan addresses him, asking if he's finally awake, and mentions that both he and Chu Tianyang suddenly fell asleep while they were talking. Tianchu, while resting in Lu Yan's lap and scratching his cheek, wonders aloud why she is the one taking care of him. Lu Yan responds by asking if Tianchu, as the consort, is perhaps dissatisfied with her care. She points out that the princess is both noble and delicate, implying that Tianchu shouldn't keep her waiting all afternoon. Tianchu is taken aback by Lu Yan's words. Tianchu laughs awkwardly and asks if Chu Tianyang is still around. Lu Yan replies that Tianyang has already left after noticing Tianchu asleep. Tianchu simply responds with I see. Internally, he realizes that big changes are about to happen in Western Qin. Outside, dark clouds gather and heavy rain begins to fall. Tianchu stands on the balcony alongside Lu Yan, watching the rain. With a serious expression, he reflects on the strength of the assassins he encountered in the past, noting that they were only at the body tempering stage. Tianchu reflects deeply, recognizing that while the assassins posed a significant threat to him in the past, their power is insignificant compared to the overwhelming strength demonstrated by Chu Tianyang. Tianchu, while watching the rain and gritting his teeth, reflects that if Chu Tianyang hadn't shown mercy at the last moment, he might have died without any explanation. Meanwhile, Lu Yan observes Tianchu from behind and asks if his sudden daytime sleep was caused by an attack from Chu Tianyang. Upon hearing Lu Yan's words, Tianchu wonders internally if his condition was so apparent. He then asks Lu Yan how she knew about it. Lu Yan responds that it was just a guess and explains that Chu Tianyang wanted to speak with Tianchu alone, but the princess intervened and prevented it. Lu Yan mentions that Tianchu suddenly fell asleep during their conversation suspecting that it could be related to Chu Tianyang's mystic arts. As she gazes at the rain, she reflects on the contrasting nature of Chu Tianyang and Tianchu. Meanwhile, Tianchu quietly observes her from beside. Lu Yan acknowledges Chu Tianyang's exceptional talent, noting that he has been a renowned mystic cultivator in Western Qin since childhood. In the hierarchy of mystic practitioners, one begins as a mystic practitioner, then advances to become a mystic expert, and finally attains the esteemed title of mystic master which is a royal designation denoting the highest level of mastery in the mystical arts. Lu Yan adds that Chu Tianyang was born with privileges and had access to countless treasures and other forms of support. With these advantages, his progress and strength advancement are naturally extraordinary. Tianchu dismisses Lu Yan's comments, expressing frustration and accusing her of attempting to insult him. He questions why she always speaks in such an irritating manner. Lu Yan, in response, clears her throat and reminds Tianchu that mystic cultivators are much rarer than martial cultivators, and the techniques they practice are difficult to comprehend. Lu Yan explains that after becoming a mystic expert, practitioners develop unique techniques of which they can be proud. She speculates that Chu Tianyang might have used one of his techniques on Tianchu. Tianchu listens attentively to her words and, with a dark expression on his face, concludes, so that's it. Lu Yan mentions that she heard Chu Tianyang has achieved the mystic expert realm at a young age, which is why he joined the Chu army to gain experience. With a cold expression, she remarks that people indeed mature quickly on the battlefield. Upon hearing Lu Yan's words, Tianchu is surprised and looks at her. He reflects on her eagerness to make further progress despite her strength. Tianchu realizes that only those who are strong enough can control their destiny, regardless of the world they are in. Lu Yan explains that after dealing with the threat at the border, the sovereign of Chu is preparing to return with his army. She mentions that Chu Tianyang, his accomplished son who has achieved great feats on the battlefield, may be named an honorary great mystic master of the court. Tianchu inquires about the significance of being named an honorary great mystic master. Lu Yan explains that it denotes an outstanding mystic master recognized by the nation, granting them access to the best resources, privileged rights, and facilities. She adds that what's special about it is the opportunity to establish their own sect. Tianchu responds coldly, expressing surprise at the idea of establishing one's own sect. He had initially thought it was just a regular title and hadn't expected it to carry such significant power. Tianchu criticizes the idea, believing it to be a misuse of the nation's resources for personal gain. Lu Yan sighs in response to Tianchu's thoughts. Lu Yan bows and expresses her intention to leave, stating that since the consort is in good health now, 
she will depart first. Tianchu, with a questioning expression, asks if she intends to return to the princess. Lu Yan replies that she still needs to go to the imperial army before returning. Lu Yan explains that during the day, his majesty suddenly issued an edict to mobilize all troops. Tianchu, listening to her words, questions why she, as the prince's personal guard, would be involved, as the gathering of the imperial army should have nothing to do with her. Lu Yan explains that she also needs to prepare because it seems like something significant is about to happen. She mentions that all imperial guards in the prince's mansion will be transferred, potentially leaving the mansion defenseless. Lu Yan emphasizes that it's crucial for the consort to take precautions and oversee the security of the mansion. She adds that the expenses for maintaining guards will be covered by the consort himself. Upon hearing Lu Yan's words, Tianchu's face pales, and he expresses disbelief, questioning how he would afford to pay for the guards. Upon hearing Tianchu's words, Lu Yan clears her throat and swiftly exits, bidding farewell. Tianchu is shocked by her sudden departure and tries to stop her, but Lu Yan leaves abruptly. Tianchu calls out loudly, urging her to come back. Walking in the rain, shielded by his umbrella, Tianchu lets out a sigh as he realizes that he never expected to reach a point where financial concerns would weigh heavily on his mind. In his thoughts, Tianchu realizes that even though he won the previous competition, all the rewards went to the princess instead of him. He's also unsure if he'll receive the dividends promised by the prince of Baiyu as quickly as he hoped. Tianchu considers that since his mother is at their family's mansion, there might not be anything left for him to sell in his room. He also thinks that Chu's sovereign will soon return with his troops, and the threat at the border has been completely eliminated. He wonders if they could simply deduct from Yan Wang's military expenditures instead. In his confusion, Tianchu grapples with what to do. He rejects the idea of deducting from Yan Wang's military expenditures, realizing it would be unethical and could be seen as corrupt behavior. He questions why he's now responsible for taking care of the prince's mansion, feeling overwhelmed by the sudden burden. As Tianchu opens the front gate, he considers seeking financial assistance from Li Xuanchang and discussing possible solutions with him. However, he hesitates as it's getting late, unsure if Li Xuanchang would be available at this hour. As Tianchu steps outside, he's taken aback to see a cart, immediately assuming the worst, that the enemy has arrived unexpectedly. However, upon closer inspection, he realizes it's not the case. A cart stops in front of him, accompanied by some maids. Tianchu watches from the doorstep, curious about their presence. From the cart, a woman emerges and begins walking towards Tianchu. He stands still, silently watching her approach. As he observes her, Tianchu recalls her dress and manner, realizing she resembles one of the courtesans of Shang Guanyin. With a puzzled expression, he wonders why she's at the prince's mansion at this late hour. In front of Tianchu, the woman standing before him greets him as a consort and apologizes for disturbing his rest. Tianchu clears his throat and asks why she has come to his residence. The woman, looking at Tianchu and flipping her hair, explains that she is following the orders of their young miss. She has come to invite the consort to be a guest at the flower shower pavilion in the future. The woman extends her hand and asks if the consort would honor her with his presence. However, Tianchu remains silent, devoid of expression. As he looks at the woman, he ponders the invitation from Shang Guanyin. He finds it strange that she's seeking him out. Tianchu contemplates that the woman is confusing and unpredictable, causing uneasiness in others. He decides it's best to keep his distance from her for now. Tianchu then responds, There are a lot of things happening lately, I don't have the time to visit. With a smile, the woman asks when the consort will have time. Tianchu, glaring at her, clenches his teeth in frustration, questioning why she's being so persistent. Resolute in his decision, he decides to directly refuse her invitation. With a solemn expression, Tianchu bows to the woman and expresses uncertainty about his availability, suggesting it might be in 10 days or half a month. He conveys his gratitude for the invitation on behalf of Chu. A maid delivers a small box, resembling a present, to Tianchu. The woman explains that their young miss instructed her to bring something for Tianchu before her arrival. She adds that their young miss mentioned it would be useful for him. Tianchu expresses curiosity, questioning if it's useful for him. Tianchu, feeling shocked and suspicious about the situation, decides to use his inspection eye ability. He calls out to the system, requesting its activation. The system acknowledges his request and activates the inspection eye as instructed. Using his inspection eye, Tianchu examines the contents of the small box and discovers a tiny plant with seven leaves inside. Surprised, he thinks to himself that it doesn't appear to be dangerous. Tianchu then looks at the small box and wonders aloud, what is this for? Taking the box from the maid, 
the woman informs Tianchu that their young miss is sent it as a repayment to him. She then hands the small box to Tianchu with a wink, explaining that it's a gesture of, thanks for teaching her the Tao of the sword. The woman expresses hope that Tianchu will accept the gift graciously. Tianchu is caught off guard as the woman forcefully places the small box in his hands. Confused, he wonders when he had taught her anything. With a light smile, the woman informs Tianchu that the item has been delivered, indicating that her duties as a servant are now fulfilled. The woman bids farewell, expressing her hope to see Tianchu at the Misty Rain Pavilion in a few days. She then departs, getting into her cart and leaving with a final farewell. As she leaves, Tianchu watches her go with a mixed expression, pondering the encounter. When Princess Ji Ruxin arrives and opens the door, she wears a serious expression and confronts Tianchu. You set aside the one at the front, and there is a sweet invite at the back. It means neglecting his wife for the attention of another woman, using a metaphor to express her displeasure. Tianchu is startled by her unexpected entrance and accusation. Tianchu clenches his teeth and turns around upon hearing Princess Ji Ruxin's voice, recognizing it. With a stern expression, Princess Ji Ruxin comments on Tianchu's actions, suggesting she's unimpressed. Startled, Tianchu panics and hastily throws the small box away. He then tries to reassure Princess Ji Ruxin, saying, Princess, it's not what you think. There's nothing going on between me and Shang Guanyin. Princess Ji Ruxin takes the umbrella and questions Tianchu, expressing doubt. She wonders why someone would send him a gift if there's no connection between them. Surprised by her accusation, Tianchu responds, I can explain. Tianchu pleads with Princess Ji Ruxin to believe him, but she responds with a puffy face, indicating skepticism. Tianchu notices Princess Ji Ruxin's expression and, with a sigh, picks up the box. He looks at Princess Ji Ruxin and smiles relieved. Princess Ji Ruxin questions Tianchu's laughter, but he continues to smile at her. Tianchu then leans in close to Princess Ji Ruxin and whispers, asking if she might be feeling jealous. Princess Ji Ruxin responds with a hint of anger, questioning the nonsense Tianchu is speaking and denying any suggestion of jealousy. She then firmly states that his personal matters are not her concern. Tianchu holds up the box and asks if that's true. He reveals the plan inside and asks Princess Ji Ruxin if she knows about it. Princess Ji Ruxin is shocked upon seeing the plant and identifies it as mystic spirit grass. Tianchu, hearing this, expresses confusion and asks what it is. Princess Ji Ruxin is surprised that Tianchu, who is skilled in medical arts, is unaware of the plant. Tianchu awkwardly scratches his head and admits he has no knowledge of it. Princess Ji Ruxin explains that only elders of the major sex would know about mystic spirit grass. She describes it as a plant believed to contain the mystical energy of heaven and earth. Taking it is said to rapidly increase one's own energy. Princess Ji Ruxin reveals that a single root of this grass costs more than 10,000 gold, emphasizing its extraordinary value. Tianchu's eyes widen in astonishment upon hearing this. He realizes that he was fretting about money while unknowingly possessing something incredibly valuable. Princess Ji Ruxin tells Tianchu that he is fortunate to have obtained the mystic spirit grass, as it will enable him to acquire a significant amount of mystical energy. Tianchu is taken aback by her sudden remark. Internally, he reflects on the rarity of the item, realizing it's something not even found in the imperial family's treasury. Tianchu's smile seems to have something on his mind. Tianchu surprises Princess Ji Ruxin by suddenly giving her the mystic spirit grass. His unexpected gesture catches her off guard. With a smile, with a smile on his face, Tianchu offers the mystic spirit grass to Princess Ji Ruxin, expressing his willingness to give it to her if she likes it. He wears a bright smile as he shows her the mystic spirit grass and extends it to her, inviting her to take it. Princess Ji Ruxin is surprised by Tianchu's offer, asking if he's really giving it to her. Tianchu confirms with a smile. Princess Ji Ruxin is left speechless by Tianchu's words. Inside, she's amazed at how valuable the mystic spirit grass is. She knows it's something cultivators rarely find and can't actively search for. She wonders why Tianchu would give it to her without hesitation. Princess Ji Ruxin pushes the mystic plant towards Tianchu, expressing her refusal to accept it. Tianchu, puzzled by her rejection, gazes at Princess Ji Ruxin with a confused expression, wonders what is this girl thinking? Tianchu insists on giving the mystic plant to Princess Ji Ruxin, pushing the box towards her and emphasizing that she must accept it. Despite her initial refusal, Tianchu forcefully offers her the plant. Princess Ji Ruxin, taken aback by his persistence, blushes. Tianchu expresses the unity between him and Princess Ji Ruxin as husband and wife, which surprises her. With a gentle smile, Tianchu questions how they will navigate the world together with her current weak cultivation level. As Tianchu departs, 
he looks back at Princess G. Ruxin and expresses his desire for her not to merely be a follower in the future. With a touch of embarrassment, Princess G. Ruxin tightly holds onto the mystic plant box, affected by Tianchu's words. As Tianchu dashes off in the rain, shouting for Li Xuancheng, Princess G. Ruxin, holding the mystic plant, feels a sense of happiness. She playfully questions Tianchu's statement about unity, teasing him about who would want to follow him. In the general's mansion, Tian Yang is lost in thought when Tianchu's stepmother approaches him. She asks Tian Yang if the princess is causing trouble. Tian Yang responds, saying it's not really the case, but he's surprised by his fourth brother's significant improvement in such a short period. Tian Yang, gritting his teeth, reveals that Tianchu suddenly gained immense explosive power, so much so that even the prince of Baiyu wanted to become his sworn brother. The prince even gave him a rare wolf beast. Hearing Tian Yang's words, Tianchu's stepmother reacts with shock. On the other side, Snow Wolf scratches his head in confusion. Tianchu's stepmother, gritting her teeth, expresses frustration at Tianchu's rapid improvement, realizing it will be troublesome. Tian Yang, pouring water on his coup, adds that he feels the princess is very protective of Tianchu and approves of him as the consort. He also notes that killing him might affect the sovereign's plans, and their father might not agree to killing Chu Tianchu. Tianchu's stepmother, folding her hands, questions why his father would disagree. She proposes the idea of crippling Tianchu instead of killing him, rendering him unable to cultivate. Tian Yang, with a cold, determined expression, reassures his mother not to worry too much. He mentions that his master has provided him with a powerful defensive talisman. However, he acknowledges that it's not wise to take action at the prince's mansion, so he plans to wait for Tianchu to come out and then find a solution. Tianchu's stepmother, addressing Tian Yang, acknowledges their limited options. She mentions receiving an invitation from the Misty Rain Pavilion and suggests that they all attend the party there in a few days. She emphasizes the importance of being together at the event, expressing her belief that important figures will be present. Tian Yang, angered, expresses his determination that Tianchu won't get another chance when the time comes. Tian Yang's mother reminds him to visit his grandfather, expressing the old man's longing to see Tian Yang. As Tian Yang was leaving, he informed his mother that, the child, has already passed away. He kindly advised his mother not to trouble herself too much over it. The next day, Tianchu's grandfather plays a game with a yellow-haired man. Tianchu's grandfather engages in a strategy board game with the other person. With a smile, Tianchu's grandfather confidently declares, three intersect, five are for sure to succeed. You have no way out. The other person, sighing, admits defeat, acknowledging Tianchu's grandfather's superior skills. They both share a laugh, and Tianchu's grandfather jokingly insists on the other person admitting their defeat. Tuobahai asks Tianchu's grandfather about his thoughts on the battle. Tianchu's grandfather simply smiles and says it's just a game played by children. Tuobahai expresses his regret that the royal family took the game seriously and mentions his knowledge of Chu Tianchu being his grandson. Tianchu's grandfather responds coldly, stating that a concubine bore the son, who was then raised by his daughter, emphasizing that they have no relation to him. Tuo Bahai asks if Tianchu's grandfather cares about whether Chu Tianchu lives or dies. Tianchu's grandfather deflects, indicating that it's a matter for the majesty to consider. Tuo Bahai then inquires about the grandfather's perspective on the alliance between the two nations. Tianchu's grandfather diplomatically states that there are benefits to both forming and not forming the alliance, and he remains neutral, emphasizing that everyone should follow the will of the majesty. Tuo Bahai informs that now the prince has returned to Baiyu and the matters regarding the alliance have been entrusted to the national division. He mentions that according to the queen's wishes, if the prince cannot marry the princess, then the alliance cannot proceed. Tuo Bahai acknowledges that since the prince has voluntarily withdrawn, it would be inconvenient to raise the issue of marriage again. However, he mentions that the queen still wants him to convey a message to the great reverend. Tianchu's grandfather inquires about the message. Tuo Bahai relays that the queen asked if the great reverend still remembers his past ambitions. Tianchu's grandfather wonders about the queen's intentions behind this question. Tuo Bahai, with a cunning expression, reveals that the queen offers assistance in realizing Tianchu's grandfather's ambitions. With the Murong family's current power and his talent, Tuo Bahai suggests that seizing this opportunity to gain status, land, and become a ruler wouldn't be difficult with proper planning. Tuo Bahai also mentions that he can disclose some news to Tianchu's grandfather, the southern Chen will soon move north. Surprised by this revelation, Tianchu's grandfather responds, expressing disbelief, to which Tuo Bahai reaffirms the information. 
an old servant approaches Tianchu's grandfather with a bow, informing him that young master Tianyang is here to see him. Tianchu's grandfather acknowledges this and agrees to meet Tianyang. Then, he turns to Tuoba Hai and expresses that if Tuoba Hai wants his support, he needs to demonstrate sincerity first. Curious, Tuoba Hai asks what kind of sincerity is required. Tianchu's grandfather responds coldly, stating that Chu Tianchu should be killed. Tuoba Hai, smiling, connects the dots and realizes why Tianchu's grandfather desires the child of the Murong family to marry the princess. Tianchu's grandfather then smiles in agreement with Tuoba Hai's observation. Tianyang approaches his grandfather and greets him. His grandfather, with a smile, holds Tianyang's shoulders affectionately, expressing happiness that his grandson has returned. He invites Tianyang to come closer so he can see him properly. Tianyang's grandfather gestures towards Tuoba Hai and introduces him to Tianyang, stating that Tuoba Hai is the young imperial advisor of Baiyu. Tianyang gazes at Tuoba Hai without speaking. Tianyang bows respectfully and greets Tuoba Hai. Tuoba Hai compliments Tianyang, remarking on his youth, promise, good manners, and appearance, and Tianyang modestly responds. Tuoba Hai observes Tianyang and realizes that he is the one Murong Fu wants to support. Tuoba Hai stands up and agrees to Tianchu grandfather's conditions. He promises to resolve the matter within seven days and expects Tianchu grandfather to keep his promise as well. Tianchu grandfather assures him and instructs someone to see off the young imperial advisor. As Tuoba Hai leaves, an old man guides him, while Tianyang and his grandfather watch. Tianyang asks his grandfather what he wants from the advisor of Baiyu. With a smile, Tianyang's grandfather responds that he wants the advisor to help Tianyang kill Chu Tianchu. Tianyang asks his grandfather if he knows what his mother wants. Tianyang's grandfather responds affirmatively, indicating his understanding of her desires. Suggesting that Chu Tianchu's demise at the hands of outsiders would be favorable. However, he advises Tianyang not to dwell on this matter for the moment and invites him to sit down and have a conversation instead. Tianyang's grandfather expresses his concern to Tianyang, stating that he cannot allow Tianyang to be implicated in the death of his stepbrother, Chu Tianchu, as it would tarnish his hands irreversibly. He explains that such an act would tarnish Tianyang's reputation irreversibly, making him vulnerable to attacks and manipulation in the future, particularly as he ascends to the throne. Tianyang's grandfather uses the metaphor of dragonflies to convey a valuable lesson to Tianyang. He reminds Tianyang that regardless of how far he progresses in cultivation, he must always remember his origins and stay connected to his roots. Just as a dragonfly needs to absorb nutrients from its home soil to grow and reach the sky, Tianyang must remain grounded to grow stronger. Otherwise, he risks becoming like a castle in the sky, disconnected from his foundation and vulnerable like duckweed floating on the water's surface. Tianyang observes the fish swallowing the two dragonflies as his grandfather advises him on the benefits of gaining status and wealth in the secular world, which can aid in his future development. Tianyang acknowledges his grandfather's guidance and expresses his willingness to obey his commands. Returning to Shang Guanyin's place, the woman who delivered the mystic plant to Tianchu informs Shang Guanyin that Chu Tianchu initially didn't want to come at all. Shang Guanyin inquires if Chu Tianchu accepted the gift, to which the woman responds he did, but mentions that he later gave it to the princess. Shang Guanyin reassures her, stating that it's not an issue as the original plan was for the plant to go to the princess anyway. Shang Guanyin, with a cold and authoritative demeanor, instructs the women to prepare for a poetry tea banquet at the Water Heart Pavilion of Tianchen Lake in five days. She emphasizes the importance of inviting young men and women from all major families of the capital to the event. Shang Guanyin instructs the woman to deliver an invitation to the princess's mansion, emphasizing that it's for the princess this time and not for Chu Tianchu. The woman with a dark face acknowledges the instruction and mentions that Chu Tianyang, the eldest son of General Chu, has also returned. She inquires whether an invitation should be sent to him as well. Shang Guanyin affirms that invitations must be extended not only to Chu Tianyang but also to all mystic cultivators who have returned to visit their families. With a sharp gaze, Shang Guanyin emphasizes the importance of this inclusivity. Then, she remarks on the arrival of the rainy season in the south as summer begins anew. Shang Guanyin explains that with the sudden rise in water levels, sea and river beasts will have the opportunity to swim upstream. This situation has been eagerly awaited by their soldiers. However, the only hindrance is the presence of sect disciples who venture down the mountain to hunt beasts and gain experience. The woman acknowledges Shang Guanyin's instructions humbly, saying she understands and will depart now. As she leaves, Shang Guanyin watches her go. After the other woman leaves, Shang Guanyin turns her attention to another direction and commands someone to come out. 
a woman emerges and kneels before Shang Guanyin, addressing her as master. In the upcoming sixth chapter, there is a plot developing where multiple characters are contemplating killing Tianxu. The people around Tianxu are growing increasingly suspicious of him, adding to the tension. We anticipate discovering the unfolding events and their consequences in the next chapter, which will be uploaded in two days.